On this video, we're going to put our 70 Nova on a frame jig. Um, this is going to be the same for most cars. This car just came in the shop and it happens to be ready to go on there. So I thought now would be a good time to show you how we do it and why we do it. The car looks like it's in really good shape. I mean, minus the obvious little bit of rust there. But realistically, I think the only thing, if I remember right, we're keeping a whole back end of this car is the frame rails. It's getting new floor pans pretty much front all the way to the trunk pan. It's getting the extensions going down and um, it's also getting inner and outer wheel wells, I believe. So a project like this, if you cut it apart, things are going to want to shift. Since we know the frame rails are straight, this car is in a good, uh, good shape that way, structurally, and it's never been wrecked, we want to hold the pieces that we're keeping in place, and that's the point of frame jig. So here's a frame jig we're going to be using. Actually, a car's never been on this. I just built it. Um, basically, there's no set in stone. This is how you have to build it. I got this metal from uh, used from somewhere um, that was used as a shipping crate, an industrial company and it's uh, I think it's five inches by 11 inches I-beam and uh, it's 516 stick and then they also came with these crossbars and I actually bought uh, 22 feet beams and cut them in half to two frame jigs and then what I like to do I weld it up we squared it both ways what you care about this is your reference point so take your time and make sure all this is square it's obviously not going to be completely level i did build it on a level surface and what i did i have it where it can roll around the garage and then if you zoom in here what i decided to do was i put um their race car weight jack bolts for like a circle track car so you got the adjuster there and there's got these pads that came off the scrap of that and what you're going to do we'll take a, a socket and we'll screw these down sorry and I got a locking nut on them. So we'll screw them down and you'll see the process in a second. But we'll get the, the car up on the lift and then we'll end up getting this centered under the car, get it leveled, and we're going to drop the car on here, center it off our frame rails and stuff and get good reference points. And then we'll weld bars up to it. So more to come on that, but that's basically our frame jig. The idea is you don't want this to move uh, in, out of square. And then what you're going to do, you set it off the levelers. You're going to need some kind of levelers because most garages like mine are not going to be level. So depending on where you are, anytime you want to work on this car, cut something up, you level it out and then you don't move the car. So that's the idea behind that. Um, more to come, we'll go ahead and uh, try to get this car on this jig. So here we are, the car's on the lift, we're gonna lift it up. Um, I put cars on frame jigs before without lifts. It's a huge pain in the butt, but it can be done. So getting them higher is a little bit harder. You might have to work with a smaller um, I-beam or something a little bit lower to the ground or just be creative and walk them up for a little bit but we got the lift up in the air enough that's going to clear the frame jig we'll go out we're going to roll the frame jig in um, and get it as close as we can centered up under this Nova you could see this uh, frame jig here is actually really heavy even with the wheels the casters it's on it's still you gotta kind of get them pointed in the right direction to make it roll pretty easy um, so now we're going to lower the car um, get it even closer to being centered this is a whole process but if you're doing a big project like this car and you're taking off quarters trunks the floor pans you know Take the time, I mean, spend the hours it takes and just do this part right. What I'm trying to do now, I'm getting jack stands under the rear end and we're going to put the car down on level jack stands. This uh, cantilever lift will not be level at all. There's no way how it's designed that it's going to go down straight. So we need to get jack stands to bring it down where the car settled straight. And you could see as soon as it lowers on the car, it kind of twists and turns a little bit. So we're just going by adjusting them. Um, and then what we're doing now, I was telling you, we're raising the levers, the uh, screw jacks on the, the frame jig to lift it up towards the car and get it at the height we want and get our small adjustments this way. 
I'm a fan of putting these frame jigs on a weight jack bolt or a, a trailer jack or something that you can adjust up and down. Um, to me, you're never going to get it really level and adjusted right um, unless you do it this way. And it just makes life so much easier. Um, you could see we'll take one corner with the level and we're walking around adjusting one at a time and then we're going back through and just rechecking everything. My floor is sloped towards the garage door so everything that I want to build in this garage really has to be level and every time I move this car I have to re-level it and make sure we're back set again. On these adjusters, I have 11 inch weight jack screw, so I got plenty of adjustment to move this thing wherever I want. At this point, once we got it about where we want and the jig leveled, we're going to go ahead and drop plumb blobs off of reference points of this car. I picked one on each side. I picked right next to the body bushing. There was a hole there, a guide hole that the factory used for the pinning going down the assembly line on both sides. And then we're dropping the plumb blob and we're measuring both sides and squaring them up. And you see I go back there and I'm tapping the jig where it barely moves on the concrete. We're on to the driver's side now, and the same thing, what I've done now, I've transposed my mark on the other side, and I've made an X, and I'm double checking it on this side, where I need this plumb blob to drop down, and you could see one of the marks we're referencing off the car. It's right next to the body bushings, they match both sides, and in the rear, I picked a frame section that was the same thing that, you know, it could be anything in your car, as long as both sides match, or you take measurements off something. You just want a square setting and something that can reference the car on both sides to square up off the jig. What's also nice about having a real heavy frame jig is it's the ability when you tap on it and move it, it takes more to move it so you don't have to move it too much. You're just hitting it and it kind of slowly goes into place, little movements. Um, also with the frame jig, I didn't mention this earlier, but you want some kind of beam that's not going to bow front to rear. That you do not want. You need something rigid enough to hold your car in place. Um, where, you know, it's going to move a little bit if you move the weight jack bolts up and down. What was easy for me was to build this kind of frame support on the front for the uh, subframe and then just drop the whole front of the car on there. And I can still move it around and make sure I'm centered before I actually weld it. To me, this was the easiest way. And then I'll pull the front lift mounts off where we're only messing with the rear now. And now I'm going off the bottom rocker panels on both sides and I'm gonna make sure the car's level. That should put the bottom of the rockers level with the frame jig and really when you build these cars and stuff most of the time the doors and everything are level off the rockers and the quarter panels are um, perpendicular off the door so that's a good way to build them so the idea here is just get the rocker panels level and that's what I'm doing I'm basically lifting up and down and adjusting my jack stands in the back where we're lifting the back of the car up because we were a little bit low in the back. Once we verify this is good, we'll go ahead on the rear mounts. So before we put these rear mounts in, the last thing we need to do is drop the plumb blob here off the frame section. I picked an area in the center that matched again on both sides and we're going to square up the back and just make sure you know we're where we are side to side and then front to back and that's going to just X off the car and it's going to tell you if your car is straight or not. I mean these things right here if you can't get this thing and you're a half inch off in places I mean you know something is definitely bent on this car. Right now we checked in on this whole run of the car I mean we were within a sixteenth of an inch all the way around and that's pretty good for what it is. This is honestly the part in the process that takes the longest it's just back and forth, back and forth, you're moving a little bit, then you have to go check the front again after you do the back. But once you're good, we go ahead and set the, the rear mounts in place, had to lift it up just a little bit, and now the front is already tacked in place right now so it doesn't move when I lifted the car back up. That was the idea. So we're going to go ahead and now that we just barely lift it up, 
We're going to set it back down on these rear mounts. I also still left the jack stands under the rear end to still hold the load of the car and make it naturally still want to go in place. These are just at ride height basically is where I set them. So the car just, it's naturally going to want to sit here. Also with these four corner mounts, nothing's completely welded until I know all four cor corners are where I want them. This one side had to be pulled down about a sixteenth of an inch, eighth of an inch max. It just wouldn't set down on the car. So again, this is a perfect example of why the frame jig's good. We just kind of easy with the ratchet and it came right down. Once it came down, we weld it in place and now we know the car is just straight. I mean, these things, the suspension moves that much. I mean, who knows? But right now, I'm very confident that this car in these point locations, front to rear, are just square and straight and level on both sides. And it's just going to make so much more sense when we cut the panels off. So now I'm going ahead and I'm committed to welding these in. I'm still not completely welding. We're putting, you know, quarter inch tacks on front and rear places that we can get to and cut off when we need to. So now that we have the front supported on the cross member and the rear frame supported, we go ahead and remove the lift. Uh, we're done with it. It made this job so much easier and so much more efficient. I have done them in the past with frame jigs where we're jacking up on a jack and then we leave the wheels on the car and the wheels are sitting ride height on like some cinder blocks or wood uh, stacks that are built up uh, where the car is going naturally like it would want to ride. That's another way to do this. Um, we could have lifted the lift and dropped it on some cinder blocks too. There's a couple ways to do this process and just remove the lift. I, I figured um, with this it was easy enough to get the lift set up and then drop it how we did i think we still got the car where we wanted and the front wheels weren't even on anything there's no weight on the car so it would be harder to get it level that's why we didn't do it this way and i think it worked out in the long run but once we get this lift out here we can go ahead and now add our supports to the other areas of the cars we plan on cutting apart and uh, removing that we want to stiffen up and make sure it doesn't bend um, so we'll go ahead and do that now and at the last video I'll cut to you in a second and we'll show you the final project when it was all done. So we got the Nova up on the frame jig. It's mounted good and everything. Um, good sign right here. Doors open and closing really well. Um, well I'll show you on the other side we've got one, two, three, four, five supports on each side on the clip i have the frame jig kind of pushed back and you'll see on the when we go around the other side the front clips overhanging i'm not really doing any work on the front clip and you know it unbolts so we're basically just holding that in place the reason the front clip's still on the car and the reason we did support it more i believe the owner is going to put subframe connectors in it so I'm not sure what style we're going with yet or what they offer for Novas, but that's why it's also on there because it will be permanently attached. So let's look at a couple things and why we put it on the frame jig. As you can see, we're going to do a full one piece trunk and on these Novas, the trunk goes the whole way around. So we're removing a lot of stuff along with the quarter panels, this whole tail panel that everything's coming off. So if you look down here at what we did, I finally got the, um, I got the support. I had most of the weight on the rear axle while we were mocking this up to get it naturally sitting where it wants. And then we did, you saw we did these mounts first in the back. And then I went and I did the frame mounts. Now, what size we're using, this was scrap metal laying around. Actually, all this is scrap metal laying around. So that's why it kind of looks, we have random pieces coming off. If you want to spend the time, buy some metal, go for it. I got tons of these things from other products around. I'm about eighth inch. I use a lot of square tubing, eighth inch round bar, just stuff like that, and then cutting it to length. Also, these brackets side by side, should be the same same measurements that goes front to rear we squared it up and obviously the car if it's square you saw we had to pull this corner down probably an 8 16th of an inch that's natural we know our jigs level and everything else so that little bit it's going to happen but that's where we want this car to sit while we're working on so let's take a look around the other side and what we did so i said we got these back mounts which you saw over there after i did 
I first, before I did the back mount, you saw I built this, basically this box right here running across. And this is what we set the clip on initially and squared it off there. And then we went to the back mount um, and we dropped it on the axle. So we're basically, we're putting all our weight here and on the rear springs. And then that made the car naturally want to sit in a place. And then I didn't weld this up till we got the rear squared off the front too. Then after the front and rear were welded, I just worked my way back. There's a frame piece under right here. I put one of those that was 11 inches. It doesn't matter. I mean, your heights on these things aren't going to matter. I like to keep my cars a little bit higher so I can get up under there and work. But whatever you're comfortable, I'm also a taller person, so I like to work on the cars higher. And I also can adjust this up and down. I go higher and lower with my screw jack. So right now, actually, we'll probably raise it up a little bit more when we work on the floor so I'm not hunched over at all. I'm almost standing up. Um, so saying that, this frame piece on the other side is also 11 inches. I also went to the uh, front spring perch, and that was 10 inches there. And what I'm doing, I'm not pulling any parts of these cars down, not hammering these in. When they go in, they just fit in. And I even leave a little 16th inch of a gap, and I'll weld those up just so I know it's not pushing on the car. And mostly, these are for just holding everything in place when we do start cutting parts apart. Same thing right here. These two aren't matched, but basically I had scrap pieces, and I'm just... I angle cut it and then I mount, I weld it on my cross pieces. They're close. It doesn't, these don't have to be perfect. I mean, it was kind of put in place and just do what you got. But, um, so then I'm going to show you also last thing. These are why we're doing full floor pans. You see some of the work in this. Um, so this is going to be a whole one piece pan front to rear. Basically the whole bottom of this car is being cut out. That's why something like this has to be done on a frame jig. It's just, to me, you can't do it on, you can do it on rotisserie, but I feel you're gonna mess your car up. It's never gonna go back in place. We leveled the car off the frame jig, so now, and it's all support in place. So when we cut everything apart and we put it back together, it should be identical to this. Um, we're gonna also verify a couple of measurements that the owner wants. He obviously drag races this car or did in the past. I don't think he is in the future, but um, one way or another, it's still gonna have that drag racing flavor. Um, stay tuned, we're gonna do, like I said, a bunch of work on this car in the future. It's supported, it's ready to go. Um, hopefully this helps. If you have a car that needs a lot of work, this is what I recommend. Get some scrap metal, uh, build a frame jig. You could look actually right here too. Your frame jig doesn't have to be huge. We did the Barracuda on this frame jig and I believe that's only a five and a half inch I-beam. Um, you could do square metal, just something that you can level out and it's not going to move when you start pulling and prying on the car. Um, I like obviously thicker is better but then you have the counter option of moving it around. So um, just see what you can find. Like I said, I, I, I did find some used metal and I got a great deal on it. So that's why we went with the I-beams under this car. Um, hopefully this helps for you mounting your car in a frame jig. A lot of people are probably going to ask, why don't we just bolt them into places on the car? It would be easier. To me, yeah, it would be easier. It's more time consuming making the brackets. For me, it's easier to just weld wherever we want on the car, not worry about bolt holes. And we'll just go through and cut them off and clean up the edges when we're done. So hopefully that answers most of the question on frame jigs and getting a good base to start your project. Uh, I think we're going to do another video with the Challenger in a, a week or so and we're going to have to put that one on a frame jig too because the front clip's all wrecked out so we're going to show you how we're going to do a car that's wrecked on a frame jig next i think but um hopefully this helped you out if it did uh comment like subscribe to our channel and uh, we'll see you on the next video thank you